Welcome back to Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan, and today we will be taking a look at the Spirit of God's Wrath Eclipso Origin Explained. Behold, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Romans 12.19 Comic books are the ultimate escape for readers, allowing them to indulge in a world that would perhaps only exist within their imaginations. Aliens, mutants, and a whole host of primordial beings populate the pages of these instruments of escapism. This treatment isn't restricted to a writer's imagination though. More often than not, comic book writers will tap into the various religions and mythologies that already exist in their personal communities to find inspiration for their stories. The legends of Thor and Hercules stand out as obvious examples, but deification is not only restricted to Nordic or Hellenistic cultures, and some of the most compelling and terrifying storylines to ever grace the pages of a comic book are derived from the most practiced religion in the world, Christianity. AMC's Preacher gives us a glimpse into what would happen if God's chosen representatives started speaking with his voice, but back in 1963, Bob Hansey and Lee Elias introduced us to his his wrath. Debuting in House of Secrets number 61, Eclipso started out as your standard Moon Knight-esque supervillain with a personality disorder. All that changed in 1992 when his true nature was revealed. So without further ado, this is The Spirit of God's Wrath, Eclipso's Origins Explained. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. Dark Origin of Eclipso Bruce Gordon, wink wink, was one of the most brilliant scientists of his generation, who specialized in solar energy. Being a man of science, he was naturally curious about the way life developed and played out in the cosmos. Gordon would frequently visit isolated locations to observe and gathering information on cosmic phenomena, especially if they were tied to the sun. On one fatal research trip to Diablo Island, Gordon's life would change forever. While he was cutting through a dense forest, trying to get to the best possible location to observe an approaching solar eclipse, Gordon was set upon by a tribal seer named Mofir. Denouncing Gordon as a trespasser and a defiler, he tried to kill the man, who was already backed onto a cliff's edge by rushing at him with a sharp black diamond. Gordon managed to step aside and avoid Mofir's maddened charge, but ends up getting cut by the diamond all the same. The locals, glad to be free of the mystic, give Gordon his costume and the black diamond as a parting gift. Gordon gladly accepts it and took it back home to Solar City, which would turn out to be his biggest mistake of his life. The Black Diamond seemed to possess some kind of evil magic, because whenever an eclipse would occur, it would trigger change in Bruce. Covering two-thirds of his face with a blue-gray eclipse mark and granting him otherworldly powers, the diamond turns the scientist into the villainous Eclipso, who proceeds to wreak havoc upon Solar City. Appearing as the physical manifestation of Bruce Gordon's bad side, initially, Eclipso would rear its head only during a solar eclipse, but the premise was later expanded to include any kind of eclipse. Stuck in this Jekyll and Hyde situation for almost 30 years of publication, it wasn't until 1992's Eclipso, The Darkness Within crossover event that we'd find out more about the evil entity behind Gordon's spandexed persona. Eclipso, The Darkness Within number 1 opened in 1891 with an expedition to Africa and saw two men recover the Eclipso's black diamond which is actually called the Heart of Darkness. The gem housed Eclipso's evil spirit and was then divided into 1,000 identical black diamonds that were scattered across the Earth. Trapped in this place on the dark side of the moon, Eclipso would take over the personalities of anyone in possession of these diamonds by manipulating their negative emotions, especially rage, something Bruce was completely unaware of when he went to the Diablos Island. For years, he thought that Eclipso was just his darker half, his ID broken loose all his most horrific thoughts given a personality of its own. It was when Spectre Volume 3 Number 17 came out that we finally discovered Eclipso's true origins. In the beginning, there was nothing, and then God, or the Presence as he's known in DC, created the universe, and with it, many manifestations of his divine being. One of these ethereal spirits was the embodiment of God's wrath, and was called Galad. He was also given the duties of carrying out divine justice as the original spirit of vengeance. However, wrath is like a raging wildfire that dishes out punishment indiscriminately, unlike vengeance which is measured and is intended in the spirit of justice. At some point, fed up with humanity's perceived depravity and failure at being God's perfect creations, Galad unleashed the Great Flood upon the Earth, killing everyone who wasn't on Noah's Ark. For this unspeakable act, he was stripped of his duties and his angelic heraldry, cast down to the moon and bound within the walls of his palace and the heart of darkness 
cursed to stay exiled from heaven for eternity. His displacement is what paved the way for the demon Aztar's redemption and return as God's newly appointed spirit of vengeance, the Spectre. Meanwhile, Galad would remain trapped within the Heart of Darkness, which was forward in the minds of Apocalypse by Darkseid himself, and became the revenge-driven rage entity known to us as Eclipso. Eclipso in various story arcs Ever since he was unveiled as the former personification of God's wrath, Eclipso has been given a larger role in the DC community, rather than just being the Mr. Hyde to Bruce Gordon's Dr. Jekyll. Fun fact for you, in DC lore, Dr. Jekyll's violently brutish split personality was a consequence of Eclipso's influence, meaning he literally created the tale of Jekyll and Hyde, which we thought is an excellent homage to Eclipso's Silver Age origins. 1992's Eclipso The Darkness Within was a massive crossover event that saw the malevolent entity possess various superheroes in an attempt to exact revenge on God and humanity, his most imperfect creation. Eclipso managed to take control of quite the roster of supers, including Wonder Woman, The Flash, Power Girl, and Green Lantern, but was eventually defeated by the mind-control-free Starman. After this, Eclipso shifted his focus from controlling a few people to an entire country, as Eclipso No. 1 saw the ethereal nightmare take control of the entire South American nation of Peridor, ruling it with an iron fist. He came into conflict with Amanda Waller's Suicide Squad, as well as the Shadow Fighters, over the Heart of Darkness, and wrecked shop against both, killing nine enhanced combatants that included Peacemaker and Wildcat 2. It was only through the combined efforts of the squad, Batman, and the Phantom Stranger that Eclipso was finally defeated with the Stranger recreating the Heart of Darkness from its shattered fragments to trap the evil spirit within it. He then sealed it back on the moon and was seemingly destroyed by the Spectre. He would return during the Princess of Darkness event, where Earth was attacked by Mordru and Obsidian, and put under permanent lunar eclipse by their blue-faced partner, you guessed it, Eclipso. During this event, Eclipso would actually be tamed by the occult practitioner, Alex Montez, cousin of the late Wildcat 2 who would go on to become a rare heroic version of the Eclipso entity. From there, the entity would go on to try to warp the minds of Superman and Lois Lane, possessing a delusional Gene Loring through the machinations of Lex Luthor during the Day of Vengeance event, and also try to take over the ruthless dark side and fail, before facing off against the Blue Lantern Corps in the aftermath of the brightest day. The new 52 reboot gave Eclipso a brand new origin story that keeps all the powers intact but turns him into one of the strongest homo magi to ever exist in the gem world. The result of the union between the House of Onyx and the House of Diamond, Prince Kala was the strongest being ever born on gem world, because he possessed the blood power of not one, but two royal houses. Unfortunately, all this power drove him insane and turned him into the evil Eclipso, who was stranded on Earth after losing the War of the Eclipse. John Constantine returned the Heart of the Darkness to Gemworld, where Eclipso attempted to retake his throne but failed once again. His most recent appearance has been during the Infinite Frontier, where he is one of the four beings that Darkseid must contend with to achieve the Great Darkness, the other three being Upside Down Man, Empty Hand, and Necron. What makes Eclipso so dangerous? If it wasn't for the restrictions imposed upon him by planetary movements and God himself, Eclipso would have easily been one of the top five DC supervillains of all time. Being the former spirit of vengeance and the literal manifestation of divine wrath, Eclipso's powers are on an incalculable scale. He was personally responsible for the biblical flood in DC canon and possesses all the requisite powers and abilities that befit a king of his stature. He is immortal and invulnerable to most things, making him nearly impossible to kill or imprison for a meaningful period of time. Even when he was disintegrated into fine space dust, he managed to come back to life. Eclipso's natural strength and speed are on par with Superman's, at the very least, and yes, that includes flight speed. In fact, in their first encounter, Eclipso managed to deal with the Man of Steel like he was taking a walk in the park. He went blow to blow with Clark and actually came out on top without breaking into a sweat. That alone would make him one of the strongest characters in the DCU, but we've barely scratched the surface of Eclipso's powers. He can shoot lasers out of both his eyes. From his left eye, he can shoot deadly rays of dark light, and from his right eye, he emits a powerful burst of paralyzing black light when he looks through a shard of the Heart of Darkness. Eclipso is also one of the most powerful magic users in existence, capable of performing godlike feats such as altering entire weather systems, shape-shifting, and ability to speak the angelic language, 
and perform many such malevolent miracles that other B-list villains could only pray for. At the height of his magical strength, Eclipso was able to bend reality to his will and cause a solar eclipse so massive that the entire world was plunged into darkness. So immense is his magical might that during his clash with the Spectre, he didn't simply overpower his successor. He outclassed him in every sense of the word, and then took over the Spectre's spirit, essentially using him as a cosmic battery. And yes, we're talking about the same Spectre who protected multiple Earths from the frickin' Anti-Monster. And somehow, we still haven't even spoken about his greatest power yet, the power to impose absolute mind control. Eclipso is hands down one of the strongest telepathic creatures in DC, able to manipulate a character's darker emotions and make them vulnerable to his presence. Once he possesses someone, it's very hard to make him let go, as even the strongest telepaths in DC can't seem to shake off his hold. Eclipso can put multiple people under his influence, a number that can range from a score of superheroes to an entire country of human beings, none of whom escape his mind control by their own strength, mind you. When he selects a host, he then lets them believe that he is granting them his power for benevolent reasons, before completely warping their worldview by corrupting their souls with his own. His only weaknesses are solar energy, which makes sense as he's literally a creature of the shadows, and the occult glyphs found of Diablo Island that can bind Eclipso's strength to your own will. Although in the case of the latter, the control is lost if the glyphs are broken. Though he can only physically manifest himself in the dark of night, all these abilities definitely make Eclipso one of the strongest cosmic villains in DC history. Creative and terrifying versions of Eclipso in various forms of media explored. Despite being such a niche comic book character, Eclipso has been given the alternate version treatment on at least a couple of occasions. He makes a cameo appearance in the Elseworlds story, JLA The Nail, number 3, where we see Bruce Gordon in his Eclipso persona restrained and contained at Professor Hamilton's Cadmus Labs. In Justice League 3001, Eclipso isn't related to Bruce Gordon at all and is not an embodiment of God's wrath. Rather, her creator is the Lady Styx, who charges her with defeating the JLA, which also includes her twin brother, Terry Magnus, aka The Flash. Smallville Season 11, a digital comic book based on the eponymous TV series, features Dr. Bryce Gordon, who finds a mysterious black diamond in Africa and becomes the villainous Eclipso. This version of Eclipso quickly deduces his predicament and rids himself of the entity, before causing any serious damage to Superman or Superboy. But the most creative and terrifying portrayals of the former Spirit of Vengeance come from the small screen, both live action and animated. The Justice League animated series episode Eclipsed adapt Eclipso's 1963 origin story without mentioning him by name. In this version, the Heart of Darkness houses a race of serpentine humanoids, called the Ophidians, who have imprisoned themselves within it, waiting to be released upon humanity and causing its extinction. In this episode, they are accidentally released by General McCormick, who donning Eclipso's OG costume attempts a perma-block of the sun's rays from reaching the Earth. Thankfully, his plan is foiled by the Flash. A more comic-accurate adaptation of the Prince of Darkness comes with DC's Supergirl, where Eclipso was the primary antagonist of Season 2. Though he's portrayed much like his comic book character, there are some key differences. Instead of being an iteration of God's Wrath, Eclipso is portrayed as a straight-up evil entity who feeds off the darkness within human hearts in an attempt to ascend to godhood. The first time he came in contact with someone from Stargirl's JSA was when he killed Midnight's mother several years ago. As the story continues, we learn that in CW's version, Bruce Gordon actually gave in to the Eclipso entity, as opposed to figuring out how to defeat it. This led to his death at the hands of Starman, the character who handed Eclipso his first definite loss on the pages of a comic book. Trapped in the heart of darkness, Eclipso was contained at the JSA's HQ, till he broke out and went back to his nefarious scheming ways. Though the season 2 finale saw Stargirl return from the Shadows Land and defeat Eclipso with the help of her JSA peers, we think it isn't the last time we're going to see his vengeful spirit on CW, as the show has also introduced Wildcat Yolanda's brother, Alex Montez. And if you've paid any attention to what we've said about Eclipso so far, you know why that prospect excites us. What are your thoughts on this character? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching.